but I think it might have We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. We're just chatting during the break. Yep. It's Allison Fields, and uh, she's Ask the Vet. 737-7587 if you'd like to call in and join in the conversation. Uh, so we've got some lines open if you want to hit us up, but thought I'd ask you, Allison, okay, at this point, um, it's been a few weeks since I've seen you. Any uh, cases? What are you seeing this time of year coming in? Folks, you know, inquiring about getting We're their tick and flea treatment. We're starting to see some fleas yeah. and ticks. Right. Um, so if you have not already started your flea and tick prevention, get it on now. Yep. It is May 1. We should have been doing this a month ago. They're right. out there. I've had Absolutely. a few on me already. I was doing yard work and my yep. There's one crawling up my leg. Michael pulled a couple off of him this weekend. He was mowing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're out they're there. Just out so, there. make sure that your um, animals have their flea and tick prevention. Um, make sure that they're on their heartworm prevention. If they haven't been on heartworm prevention, they're going to need a heartworm test before they can get on heartworm prevention. So, see your vet. They get the heartworms by mosquito bites? Yep. One mosquito. If, you, if your dog is bitten or cat by a heartworm, or sorry, by a mosquito that is infected with heartworms, that's all it takes. One mosquito bite. And that'll be it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how often? I mean, I guess, I mean, they're furry and everything. Mosquitoes bite yeah, through the fur? They'll bite through the fur, but they'll also get them on their ears, yeah, noses, gotcha. underbellies don't have a lot of um, fur on them, you know, inside of their back legs, that's, their you're bellies. Right. You know, there are plenty of areas that um, lips, you know, that don't have a lot of fur. Do you see many animals come in with uh, allergies like contact dermatitis? I, our beagle has, I talked to you, with you about that before. Sometimes, you know, the tummy will mm -hmm. just turn red. I mean, he likes lying there in the grass. Who doesn't? Right. In the sun, but it gets to him. Yeah. And so we treat him for that. Yeah. Right? We, we see that. It's not super common, but yes, it's it's common enough that we see that. Okay, and the treatment for that, I, I forget, we it's some type of allergy medicine. or a, Typically, we do an antihistamine. They may do a, um, a shampoo um, for some soothing stuff. It just depends how bad it is and, mm -hmm. you know, what the symptoms are. Okay, now, uh, I touched earlier on the fact that, you know, there was crazy storms this weekend, the raccoons, mm -hmm. which right? you don't deal with, but Alden's puzzle will. Anything else? Um, <sighs> We talked about maybe putting the dogs in, getting a thunder shirt on them. What about doggy downers? Yeah, so there are some, there are some great drugs. Some people use those when they take their pets when they travel. Uh, some people use yes. those when they bring their pets to the vet. Probably yes. a good, that's a cool move, right? Yes. Settle them down if they yes. don't like it. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit more than just settling down. You know, sometimes they're you know just crazy. Oh, oh, okay. And so you, you give know. them the pills so that they're more yeah, manageable. Yeah, we have mom get, or dad give the medicine at home before they even come in. Gotcha. Because um, once they get all amped up, the medicine's not going to work, which is something that if you're, if you do have a storm phobic dog and your vet has given you medication for that, it's probably not going to work once the storm hits. Once the storm hits. Well, that's why we have Leland so, Statum. Right. So you pay attention to right. the forecast. You keep an eye on Leland. He'll yeah. let you know what's happening. Um, but, you know, we give that at least for usually about an hour before. Same thing with fireworks. So, you know, if they have, if they're no, noise phobic, you know, if you know that the fireworks are coming up, the kids are going to start on the 4th of July right. as soon as it gets dusk, you might want to go ahead and give that medication at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Kind of make yeah. sure we're taken care of. Right. Okay. Thunder shirts work really well too. A lot of really, times. To remind them what those are. I mean, it sounds cool, but it's it's kind of a, there's different sized ones depending on the dog. Yeah, and it's, it's a like Velcro a, wrap. A Velcro wrap, kind of like a vest. Um, they've done a lot of studies with um, kids on the autism spectrum, mm. and they make weighted blankets for yeah. them because they like the feeling of it, it's comforting and it soothes. Well, it's the whole idea so, of a baby, you know, wrapped swaddling. up. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So. Looking at the human models of this, they have made this for dogs, and I think they make them for cats, which just makes yeah. me laugh. Because Why? You Why? Put, well, you put anything on a cat, like clothing, and they go, yeah. Bing. Uh, they don't like it. And then they just stay there like this. They're like, I can't move. I can't move. There's something on me. Um, so, yeah, it just makes me laugh. But no, dogs do a whole lot better with them. That's cats. You're right. Um, but no, it, they, it seems to work really well. Now, it doesn't work for everybody, and sometimes we have to use it in conjunction with drugs. Um, but it's a great starting point and can be helpful. Baxter had one. Yep, yep. Juice mm -hmm. has it. It's handy stuff. All right, so we've got a call from Jewel. Yay! Jewel, good morning. Hi, Jewel. Top of the morning, Nick. Hey, what you up to? It's good to hear from you. Thank you. Yeah, I always enjoy the show. I see you have her back on again. Oh, good yeah. Fields. Good to see you. What's your question today? Oh, uh, well, I got a, just a couple of comments, if I may. Last time you was on, you spoke of uh, acquiring.
and kitty, kitty cats at uh, different places. And I got to think, and if I may, I wrote a little poem. <laughs> it ain't very long. It's called A Parcel of Kitty Cats about how I come by mine. How many do you have again? Oh, man, I just got seven in the house. I don't know how many underneath the house. Somebody dropped off four little females here last fall. Well, they just dropped them off out. But you live out in the country then, right? Yeah, I'm out here in Hidden Valley Lakes in Hickman okay. County. Yeah. It's real, real beautiful. I look out the window and there's deer and turkey meander. But let me uh, recite this to there you. you. I gave this to the Hickman County Humane Society. and um, Original poetry. Go right. ahead. Go ahead and hit us with it. It's called a parcel of kitty cats. Okay. <laughs> Says, I got a parcel of kitty cats, but I just can't say where I got them at. At first, just one at the old screen door. Next thing I know, there's a couple more. <laughs> they look so skinny and hungry to me as I thought, Dear Lord, how can this be? Don't their masters know better than that? So I decided to look after them cats. I bought them some food, mixed in an egg, and soon more came and started to bake. <laughs> so I bought more egg and more cat food, and it wasn't long as looking good. I'm sorry they'd gone hungry before, and that their masters didn't want them no more. On the other hand, I'm glad you see, I got a parcel of kitty cats and all for free. I like it. You know what? That was That's good. Awesome. I was like, that what are we going to really get good. from you? But that was good. Yeah, that was really good. Hey, you, you know, they're lucky to have you as an owner. Now, you feed your cats eggs? Do they like eggs? I'm sure he oh, just yeah, does well, that I for do. them. I give them hot dogs and chicken. Oh, and I spoil them. He's they right, right after up my there head. And eat with me and sleep uh -huh. next to me yeah. in the wintertime. Sure. Okay, listen. I'm going to keep you what Listen, Jewel, it's always good hearing from you now. Cats like eggs? I'm sure they do. They would. I mean, that's supposed to... Don't they say if you beat in a little egg with the food, it maybe makes their coat shiny? It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. But that's a nice thought. Okay. Well, it's a good form of protein. The, the thing is that a lot of these things that we hear are, at this point in time, kind of old wives' tales. Yes, I'm sure that at some point that used to help because these animals used to eat nothing but like leftover scraps of yeah. not a whole lot of protein and other stuff like that. Egg was a cheap and easy way to throw some protein at animals. Now that they are, most animals are on a commercial diet, mm -hmm. it has everything in there that they need for all of this, so they're getting everything they need in that commercial diet. Right, right. And that's all you need for them. And, well, Correct. Seven cats. He has, you know, indoor, outdoor cats. I thought I, I was just, bad with three. I know. Now, I, I, I hope, and it can get expensive. I hope, like, those four females that were dropped off, he went and had them, yeah. you know. Yeah. He spent he's hundreds of dollars on these cats. Well, he got, yeah, they'll have more soon. of those. But that's great. And uh, people still come out to our neighborhood and stuff, and they'll just dump cats off. I don't get it. I don't either. I don't get it. And, you know, we still see, you know, how many uh, animals are rescued. Um, since you were last on, I think they raided another home, and uh, there was a dog fighting ring and things like this that still go on. And then they take many of these animals to the shelter here in Metro, the last place. It's not a no-kill shelter. They have no choice. Metro they, is now, I they, think. They overwhelm. They, well, vector control and the animal control at some point, they're the last location. I think they do everything they can to avoid them. What if they get overcrowded? They don't turn any away, so they have to take them. And if they're filled to the gills, I think they still have to euthanize animals. There's no choice. They might. They can't let them, which there's always the last spot, the last place where animals go. Right. See, no-kill shelters sound great, and I think that's wonderful, but when they're full, they're they full. don't take any more in. Right. So that's a convenience for them. There is the public service that mm -hmm. has to take the animals in, so they're not well, running straight. They do what they can, and if no one adopts them and they're overwhelmed with animals, what do they do? They're not letting them right. go. A lot of them, there's a lot of rescues out there that will come pull dogs from shelters as yes. they're running out. And they, know, they have relationships, which is it's great. It's really interesting to me to look at the difference in animal control here versus animal control in Connecticut. Well, oh, how so? They're empty. Oh, meaning there aren't... We ship dogs yes, you're right. from here. You're right. From all over the South. All the time. Weekly. Yep. 
up north because to people, people want pets, pets and they don't have any to choose from. Yep. When Animal Rescue Corps comes through, and you've seen they're the ones mm -hmm. that go out and rescue a lot of these animals from these uh, puppy mills or hoarders, and they'll have them and they'll set up over there at the mm -hmm. uh, fairgrounds in mm -hmm. Lebanon. And then once they're all set, a big truck yep. comes through and they load up once yep. all the animals are healthy and ready to go and they take them up to the northeast. Most of them have and they homes adopt them all most of they them go. are adopted before they get there. Because like they've they been get online. Off yeah. of their truck and they're like, here's your dog and they're they've seen pictures and they know exactly who it and I mean it's great homes. They go to great So great what do you homes. imagine? Is it a cultural difference from the south to the north in that region? I Why think do we it's have a more cultural strays difference, here? but I also think that they are much more um, populated. We have a lot. I mean, I know that Nashville is very crowded and very populated, but you can drive 10 minutes from downtown Nashville in just about any direction You're and in a find rural area. a rural area, mm -hmm. maybe 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so there are a lot. We have a lot of rural areas in Tennessee, and the mentality has been over the past 100, 200 years that, you know, yep, they're dogs, they're outside dogs, they're going to take care of themselves, they run free, they do whatever, they don't get spayed, they don't get neutered, now we have more puppies. In the north, I think things there, you know, they are so densely populated in much smaller states for the most part, not all of them, but they they don't have that problem. Yeah. And they also, since they're so densely populated, they have more people that can support more of um, funding for animal shelters and yeah. spay and neuters and, and things like this so that they just don't have that issue. I also like to think that it's because northerners aren't quite as fun and nice as southerners yeah. and we're much more likely to be like, oh, come on, little dog, or like Joel, yeah. let me just take care of these cats. Right. Up north, they're like, oh, cat, make yeah. it go away. Make that's my <laughs> well, I'm glad they're there to take off these strays there, because a lot yeah. of them end up in wonderful homes up there that are rescued from there, which is great. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's go to uh, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Hey, how can we help you? You know, I have a um, 20 plus year old um, calico cat. Wow. She has been great up until this year, and she started. <clears throat> eating like a little pig and she's losing weight and she throws her food up uh, quite a bit. So I changed mm. her food, which the vet told me was the wrong thing to do. And um, I went back to her old food and I'm trying to figure out if there's something I can add to her food. Did you, or... take, her, did you take her to the vet? I did. And did they do blood work? Um, not yet. Okay. I think you need to go to the vet. I think you need to have some blood work done. I think you need to check her kidney values, and I think you need to check her thyroid. Oh, okay, okay. Okay? I Don't even bother messing with the food. Blood work, yeah. check kidneys, and check her thyroid. She's done something right to have a cat for 20 right. years. Absolutely. But at that age, the things that you mentioned, what is it that happens with a cat at that age? Thyroid just stops producing the way it should. And that you know, it, it starts overproducing. Oh. And so it makes them very hungry. <clears throat> Even though they're hungry and they're eating like pigs, they're still losing weight because their metabolism is going crazy. They can have uh, vomiting. Okay. Um, kidneys at that age, cats, you know, we take know. such good care of our cats that we're keeping them alive, but their little kidneys are not designed by mm. the good Lord to live that long. So they start failing. So um, I think that before she does anything else, food wise or anything, blood work needs to happen. Yeah, I can tell you, Nancy, if it's kidneys, that's a rough thing. There's not much you can really do. But well, there's stuff we can do. Well, We can't fix it, but we can totally right. manage it. But if it's thyroid, you can fix it. You can fix it or you can manage it. Yeah, those pills are great. Yes, Gosh, they are. The little, they're not expensive. You give yeah. it to them, and boy, does it make a yeah. difference. So hopefully we the also, thyroid will help. We also now have um, radioactive iodine treatment for hyperthyroidism in cats in Middle Tennessee. So meaning that you the, the radioactive, you, that helps you know that there's a problem, or does nope, it help treat it? It treats it. Really? You take the cat in, and they get radioactive iodine. This is, They do this in people as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it goes to the overactive cells and basically kills them. Oh, and cool. then your cat is no longer hyperthyroid, so you don't have to do medicine. Pretty darn neat. Well, right. good luck with a 20-year-old cat. I hope she's the average age of a cat. I mean, that's an old cat, right? That's an old cat. That's an old cat, but hopefully she's got some years left. We'll take a break. Be back with more of your calls, more of our conversation up to the top of the hour with Allison Fields, veterinarian, right after this. Yeah. Big